Welcome back. So I have another altered book art journal to share with you today. This one was originally Grimm's Fairy Tales by the Brothers Grimm. So again, I take out a good portion of the pages. So I'm only working with, oh, maybe 15 to 20 page spreads. And I do just of the pages first. I generally use matte medium and matte gel as my uh, adhesive. So uh, here we go. This one is, uh, this is a sketch I did when I did uh, 366 uh, drawings because it was a leap year. So I did a sketch every day. Here we have some washi tape. Here we have some pet fur because it gets everywhere. More washi tape. This is part of the original illustration that was on the page. And over here, I found these, I think it was in like a sketchbooking kind of section, but it was these uh, like plastic frame sort of thing, so they're translucent. I assume they're more for scrapbooking, but I thought that they kind of created a kind of a funky vis visual. And the color matched the washi tape that I added over here. This was an original illustration that I altered with the man's face. The text, dastardly. That was a dastardly deed. I don't know any other sentence that the word dastardly uh, would go well in, actually, other than that was a dastardly deed. I have a tissue paper that is uh, sewing patterns. So if you've ever done any sort of sewing, you have the, the cutout tissue paper, and that's what this is in the background. Over here, these were some stickers that were little flowers. It was almost a ribbon some clock hands. These are actual metal here. I love constellations. I tend to kind of make them up and throw them in a lot of my intuitive art, if you're familiar with my actual painting artwork. When I was living in the Azores, they had these little sugar packets that always had these two little people that kind of look like children, but they're always naked, so I'm gonna assume that they're not children. And it was always like, you know, love means sharing your coffee, or I don't know, love means hanging out at a table with a mug and a candle. Uh, I love art history, so the Venus of Willendorf there was uh, another piece I just like throwing in. This was cut out of a children's book, uh, but a children's textbook, like, in elementary school when you get kind of a, a bunch of short stories in one in one book. We had better run because there's men wrestling in the field behind us, I guess. I don't know, I tend to work pretty intuitively with my pages, so I don't necessarily have a particular narrative that I'm intending to create. I just kind of let it uh, come out however it, it comes out. This is actually metal, so I have a real key here with some little gears. You can hear that they're metal. The stickers, I like letter stickers. I have a ton of different kinds. I really, uh, I really recommend them if you like adding your own text to, to things, to pages. I have some vintage stamps. I bought a bunch, I think on Etsy, years ago. This is painted in with Liquitex Fluid Acrylic. It, it has a nice translucency to it, so you can kind of see the imagery underneath, which I really appreciate. Oh, hitching rides on trucks is dangerous. And that is true. That's another one from the 
1940s educational magazines that I had that have all of the very simple safety advice for children. If you want to kind of make up your own story or narrative, an easy way to do it is just picking certain words and crossing out the others. Once upon a time, again, we have some word stickers there. The queen was so very beautiful, they might feast over her virtue. I don't know quite what I mean by that, but it's, it's left up to interpretation of the viewer. So that's on you to make sense of that. So good luck. More vintage stamps. This is uh, one of my original photographs. When I went to Paris, I believe this was kind of a sculpture garden outside the Louvre, but it had a little, a little greyhound in it. And I'm always drawn to greyhounds. One of the first dogs I had as an adult was a greyhound mix and he, she was very spoiled, but, but very, very sweet and a, a delightful dog. But the hope. Here, this happened so quickly. More of the little metal gears. If you uh, just add lines across something, you kind of give it a horizon line or a sense of a shelf or a table or a floor. So that's a one another way to kind of create kind of a composition, like a, a reason that, you know, something the books are on, so they're not just kind of floating. I think this is one of my favorite spreads in this book. It's this vintage kind of 1920s style woman. Although I love that she has the short hair. I think that that's kind of unusual, but very, very striking and elegant. This is some paper that was burned, so you can actually see the edges are kind of uh, darkened from that. And over here, I have a different kind of marker than the ones that I always recommend, than my, different than my Faber-Castell ones, because you can see it, it bleeds. So this is what I'm talking about when I say that it's not waterproof, so it'll kind of bleed like that. Uh, it, it's a really interesting aesthetic, so if that's something that you're wanting, there's nothing wrong with that by all means. I just think it's, it's good to kind of know what your art materials are doing and how they're gonna react to, to different variables that they're exposed to. Loving is hard and kills her. That sounds very menacing. Another way to create a sense of depth in your art or in your pages is, again, the use of a horizon line, essentially. And here I have it up kind of closer to the top third. This is washi tape. And it was created in a pattern that you can actually kind of match it up. So it's three different strips of the tape. And then these angles create a sense of uh, depth because you look, you feel like you're looking back. So you have your background and your kind of middle ground where the phone is and then your foreground where the phone is kind of coming up. Adding hints of shadow is another way to kind of create depth and make your um, like collaged pieces. If you're adding, uh, you know, different stickers or found objects or found imagery, if you add shadow, it integrates it more into your piece as well. You can read a lot of it, but it isn't particularly uh, utilized in the pages. It's just kind of, just kind of there as a visual. This is another illustration that was originally in, in the book. This is a biohazard sticker that I'm pretty sure I just found somewhere in the world, probably while out walking my dog. Special delivery. Thou queen, art the fairest. Replica. So this is more of the washi tape. I really enjoy the different patterns 
that you can get with it and it's so forgiving because if you stick it down and you wanted it at a certain angle or you wanted it to line up a certain way, if you don't quite get it right, it's usually very forgiving if you peel it up and then replace it. And not everything that's adhesive is quite that forgiving. So that's definitely a plus that washi tape has to offer. Over here, oh, another pet hair. Sometimes it just gets glued in. I promise it's not as messy here as that might imply. This is another example of how pens can bleed. This was drawn with uh, one of my favorite kind of just pens to work with, but if it gets wet, it does bleed like this. Luckily, the lines are so fine that the bleed doesn't detract too much. You can still very clearly make out it's a bed and a chandelier. We have a window. So it, it's still effective. So I think this is one of those kind of examples where the bleeding works fine with the intention of the page. Happily, we have more hearts over here. This is uh, an acrylic ink, so it reacts a little different. It's much more liquidy when you play with it. And then what happened here to get all these little textures is I'll have a lot of the pigment here. You can see the pigment was originally on the heart. And then I used a spray bottle and just lightly sprayed. And then where the color kind of then where I would brush up the color and it would touch those little droplets of, of water that had been sprayed down. It kind of blends and flows and bleeds. And I really enjoy just the natural texture that that, that, that creates. This page spread, um, this side, was used as a cover for Somerset Art Journaling. If you're familiar with art journaling magazines, which is a pretty niche market, uh, you might have seen it. But it's, it's funny because it's just not even one of my favorite parts in this book. But I was quite, quite flattered that they chose it as a cover. These iridescent stars are delightful. You can see they really create a lot of sparkle. I'm not, I definitely, especially when I was younger, I wasn't particularly a fan of glitter and sparkle and iridescence. I appreciate it more now that I can just kind of, kind of like what I feel like enjoying. The night wind blew and she raised her voice. This is another type of washi tape here. This is another illustration that was altered by me but did originally start in the book with this kind of soldier face. I think that was a stamp, not a stamp, I think it was a sticker. And this, this was a postcard. It was a vintage postcard I got at an antique shop when I was living in England. These little dragonflies are tissue paper and over here too, you can kind of see the tissue paper is originally this uh, tan taupe beige kind of color, but I added the teal, I think this is alcohol ink, which does a whole different, different thing. But you can see where the paper kind of tore because tissue paper is very fragile. Another one of the little Dragonflies. This is old candy wrapper. When I was in college, somebody received art materials or something in a box, and a bunch, a bunch of this was used as the packing material to keep their stuff safe during travel in the mail. And so there was just a bunch of it. And so I have, I took 
so much and I still have a little bit left that I use here and there in my mixed media and collage work. Cinderella lay, as she always did, in her dirty frock. So, you know, that's a thing. This is a compensation record for A.M. Rudd from 1941. I found this scrapbook from a road trip that somebody took, you know, decades and decades ago, and it just had a lot of kind of old records and postcards and, you know, maintenance for their car on their road trip and stuff. It was really a, kind of a random find that worked really, really well for getting different uh, ephemera to use in our journaling. But I am afraid of the future. So this is another of the metal keys. So these I use the matte gel or a gloss gel to adhere to the page because it's so thick. You need something that has a thicker consistency to keep it in place. These are more of the letter stickers. This is a postcard. Birthplace of poet Longfellow, Portland, Maine. Some more of my sketches and more washi tape. Some of these checkerboard designs, you'll see I kind of use those here and there throughout different journals. This is a very messy page. I'm not sure if I'm particularly fond of this one either, to be honest. You are dreaming. You can tell it's a dream because there's three hands on the clock and they're all the same. Oh man. I think these were circus performers, I believe. I found a book of old circus stuff that was really a, a strange uh, but interesting find that has a lot of different different bits and pieces. I think that's kind of what, I think I've had a few images from that so far in this book as well. Another sketchbook page where you can see that my ink has bled a decent amount. But again, you can still see what the image is supposed to be and I don't think that the color having bled particularly detracts from the image. More of these tissue paper dragonflies and then I drew one as well to go with the the other imagery with a strangely altered face I don't know if I decided to emphasize that and then add the face or if I had the face and realized this would be a good accompanying statement this is another one I know from the circus book here we have a tea bag that I replaced the tea with these little iridescent stars. They're similar to the ones that we saw on that other page, but they're silver. You can see they kind of reflect the little, yeah, the little silver stars there. But he did look after me. He married. Wants and vacancies. Pull gently to release string. Here is another thing I like to do. Her legs actually go into these fingers that are coming out, so you have like this hand that's holding this card. And if you line up various collage elements, then you kind of create implied line. So the eye naturally goes here and then it her foot turns into a thumb, which is kind of unsettling actually but it it's still an interesting an interesting let it go let it let it be what it will and enjoy the process and if you do something you don't like you can always cover it up and you never have to show anyone what you're creating your art your art can very much be for you and i think that that's really important for people to remember when they have a creative outlet that it's about the process and it's about enjoying the process and not necessarily creating something amazing 
or even creating something that you want to show everyone or, or anyone. There reigned a queen thought the most, but then there's no adjective. I think part of this is from a circus book, but I replaced the head with a different one. This is from a card game I found somewhere at some antique shop or thrift store, and it was called Beat Your Neighbors, which is an interesting title for a children's card game. But look at you have your two happy moms with their little babies. I think this was the wrapper from a cupcake or maybe a, a truffle or something. But I really enjoyed the sort of swirl uh, aesthetic and so I kept it and added it to my pile of things that I will make art out of. I was trying to play with the idea of like veins and arteries, kind of the movement of of feelings in your body and the movement of, of blood bringing oxygen or how thoughts and your nerve endings kind of bring signals to your brain. So that's kind of what inspired some of this that I painted. It does have these little hearts that I added and those are with the India ink pens that I love. Against no art, with a heart, and he looked true. This is another page I did not finish. Apparently I just kind of decided I was done with this journal and just didn't play anymore with it. But this is tissue paper as well. We have a Da Vinci Vitruvian, Vitruvian man. Barely, you can kind of just barely make it out there. There's this other sort of gold and beige tissue paper here that has these little paisley designs. I went over a few of them with the black. So those are part of that design. And then, then the triangle tissue paper and then also more of the uh, sewing pattern here. You can see that's the, the line that tells you seam allowance. The end of that one. So yeah, that's my Grimm's Fairy Tale altered, altered book art journal. So thank you for taking the time to check it out with me. I hope you found it at least interesting to look at or maybe inspiring for ideas if you enjoy visual journaling.